Okay. What would you say was your most memorable or enjoyable show from that from that early first tour before the album? The most memorable show, well, you know, we played one in Ontario, uh, down in Toronto, the Opera House was a real cool show. Uh, probably our biggest crowd there. But I would say that the, the, the best show that we've ever done was, was probably one of the smaller venues, but it was packed. Uh, it was in Kelowna, which is a little further out, uh, actually in BC. And uh, there was this small little cafe almost just packed with 150 people, and they were just going nuts. And it felt more welcoming than uh, a huge venue filled with, you know, five or 600 people, 700, I don't know how many people, but, you know, that, that small little venue, that was, God, I, I think that was my show I've ever played. With all those people packed in there, the energy must have been really high. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of people squishing up close to you, and, um, and, and they're having a good time, we're having a good time. Yeah, after listening to your album, too, it really brings me back to, to my roots, you know, listening to the heavier music. My first show ever was Pantera, and, I mean, you know, that was, I, I was up in New Jersey then, I'm in Georgia now, and just... The pit, I can imagine the pit at one of your shows. It, it's got to be a glorious thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely so. a lot of fun. That's what, that's what we feed off of. That's what makes us want to play more. Yeah. More exactly. So, um, speaking of independent touring and, and that kind of vein of thinking, what avenues would you either say worked or would you recommend for other self-sufficient independent bands who are trying to promote themselves? Uh, I know that you guys have an EPK with Sonic Biz. I believe that's how we first got in touch with one another. So what, what sorts of things like that have you found work well and what would you recommend to other people in similar situations as One Bullet Resolution? Well, there's a lot of people that are trying to get your money. A lot of people will take advantage of indie bands Offering them, you know, glitz and glam, lots of fame or whatever, and it's all bullshit. Uh, the reality is, is, I mean, I don't think it's ever changed since day one. You, you've got to do it yourself uh, until you find someone who's got a lot of money themselves that they're not going to ask from you. In other words, a big label. Uh, other than that, you really do have to push yourself. Sonic this helps with the press kit, but I mean, that's just. That's just an avenue for you to send your information to the booking agents, promoters, and whoever else is interested. But as far as getting people to your shows, as an independent band, there's, there's, I don't know, there's no secret. You just got to get out there in any kind of avenue you can. With the internet now, it helps. You don't have to do all the legwork. Uh, shit like Facebook, MySpace, I don't know, there's, a, there's tons of sites, but it is so much do it yourself now and you know I've heard, I've heard a lot of horror stories now of bands getting dropped by labels because they, they the label can't support them mm -hmm. so what does that band do you know but what about all the other bands that are trying to get on that label what do you do you gotta do it yourself so if you need someone to do like for example what we're doing right now you need someone to do graphic design well it's gonna cost you money to get someone to do the graphic design for you mm -hmm. why not just do it yourself. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we produced our album ourselves. It saved us probably $20,000. Uh, I don't know how much. I mean, I've heard. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you can, spend a, you can spend a pretty penny recording and producing and mastering an album. What sort of equipment did you use to record? What, uh, what did uh, Jeremy King have in his studio? Did you use Ardor or what, what did you use to record? Uh, the program we use is uh, Sonar, Sonar Kickwalk. It's sort of the alternative to Pro Tools. Uh, it's all digital age now, so really, as long as you've got a room to record your drums really good in, the rest can all be done in a small room, really anywhere you need it to be. Uh, it could be in your house, it could be in your recording studio, I mean jam studio. Uh, a lot of our stuff is recorded all over the place. You know, there are some places in the studio where we're paying an engineer to record our drums. 
You play guitar, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did, did you guys use any drum triggering? Drum triggering? You mean like, uh, what would it mean? Um, like triggers for drums where you can kind of, uh, electronically record parts of the drums or the whole kit. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, there's a mix of some sampling, which is what a lot of bands are. I mean, I don't know what I mean sampling, like just a sample sound of a drum being hit, mm -hmm. as opposed to using the organic sound. I think, I don't know if there's any videos anymore that really bother with the completely organic sound. Um, we didn't have anyone playing the drums for us. That's what you mean. No, no, I don't mean somebody else playing the drums. It's... <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not very capable of speaking technically about it. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Um, there's a lot of uh, metal bands that use uh, triggers to get a particular perfect sound out of their kit, and that's that's what I was asking about. Um, was it just you know the kit was was it just mic'd and that's it, or um, a lot of like you know bands like Pantera and, and, uh, and any of the bands that are even more crazier than that, you know. The uh, the drums aren't completely real. It's uh, they're, 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 the drummer's actually playing a real kit, but the, the kit's triggered to get a particular sound out of it. And you were, uh, you struck my interest when you uh, you said something about the a good room to uh, record the drums. And I hadn't uh, actually thought about that. I didn't know how much of a difference that made. Yeah, that's a huge difference. Is getting that good organic sound. Um, and. You can really only get that in a few places. We went to an actual studio and engineered to record the organic sounds, but when he recorded them, um, we listened back and he added the samples. Uh, I guess what you're saying is the triggering, and it's, it sounds ten times better because it is our drummer drumming, but some of it is the sounds of the triggers hitting yeah, the sample sounds, so it's, it's a blend, and it's sort of a you got to kind of blend the organic sound with the triggered sound to get the perfect sound, really. You don't want it to sound too mechanical, so you need that organic sound. And that organic sound isn't going to sound perfect, which is kind of what makes the music, you know, believable. So we didn't want to make it completely triggered sample. Uh, but there's some in there, yeah, definitely. Okay, what kind of gear do you guys play? <laughs> 